All right. Good evening, everybody. It is 1140 as of recording this video. This is the first video in the Die Hard Painting YouTube channel. Uh, I am John, and tonight I want to show you how to dry brush. This was a challenge to see how fast I could paint a miniature. I got this guy done in 90 minutes with minimal work, mostly dry brushing, a few extra things like edge highlighting, but a very simple color scheme. And I just had the thought that this would be very good for batch painting, either a squad or a whole army of guys. Someone when it comes to like cheap infantry units like these, uh, this Space Marine. I think this is a guy from the new Infernus squad, the new expansion that just came out. So... Super simple, super easy, hoping to save time, save time in the base coating stage by dry brushing, add some texture and a little bit of interest to the model. And I'm going to show you how to do it, this exact model, uh, in this video today. Everything you're going to need pretty much is going to be just a dry brush, nothing fancy. This one is a cheap army painter. It says Masterclass Moderate Dry Brush. I got this at a local game store. Uh, a cheap synthetic brush this is citadel starter brush i think this came in one of the uh one of the painting sets that comes with like three models and a handful of paints uh your paint for your color scheme and a cork board instead of paper towels for your dry brush this is just how i do it uh new to dry brushing so i'm not the best at it but i had a lot of fun painting this model and i hopefully you'll learn something new and this will help you out so Let's hop right into the video. All right, so after assembling and priming the model, we are gonna go right into dry brushing. And even though it's in the name, we do want a little bit of water in our dry brush. Not too much though, maybe a drop or two as reference. In this video right here, I'm checking out my glove to see how much moisture, and even then I go ahead and decide that this is gonna be a little bit too much. Now, if you have too much water, you're gonna run into the issue of it having this chalky effect with the paint and how it interacts with the model. We don't want that. We want it to have a nice coverage. So too much water can lead to that. So now it comes time to load the paint onto the brush. We don't need too much, even that is a little, a little much. I wipe it off. But we now work it into the cork. Circular motions and don't stay in one spot for too long. It's gonna help really remove the paint and also properly Disperse it on the brush instead of just smearing it in one spot and creating a pool of paint. And now on the miniature, same thing, just little circles. We're trying to hit every edge, every corner, every millimeter of this model, 360 degrees, instead of just left to right and giving it this texture. We're just trying to want to hit it all over. And this fast forward, you can see me, how much paint is coming off, how little you, you can say. And even then I load the brush once or twice, I think in this step, but uh, this is gonna be pretty much the bulk of the work for this paint job. And remember a little bit less circles and slowly deposit. You can always add more paint to the model. Don't do too much. Remember chalkiness is gonna be a red flag and you don't, definitely don't wanna smear it or else it's gonna ruin the effect of dry brushing. And then once you're done, you should have something that looks like this. And don't worry if you got paint where you shouldn't have, like on the gun. We're going to go back and clean that up later once we pull our black out. But you should have something that closely resembles this. But once again, it's going to be up to you. Now the first color I chose is going to be gold. And then for pretty much here on out, when it comes to color scheme, trim work. What's going to catch the eye? The gold of his chest, the pauldrons, the gun, the back of the backpack. I just want the elements to be there on the model so when you're standing from a few feet away, you know exactly what unit that is, what faction he's a part of, and just all the colors are represented in there. All right, now like I said earlier, if you had a little bit of spillover with that primary color, no worry. Right here, we're going ahead and cleaning it up, pulling the black out, getting that color, that base color back onto the gun. And you can see there's not much spillover. I wasn't too worried about it. And it's going to be a quick, easy paint over. And while I have the black out, I'm hitting the gun and any other part of the model that I want to be black, like the back of the uh, the knees, the under armor, the whatever you would call it. I'm sure it has, has some name. All 
All right, and the second color that I picked is going to be the steel, hitting parts of the gun and on the backpack, just to give it a little bit more variety from front to back. And with just three colors, our model is looking nearly completed. Just a few extra little details. All right, so the other technique that I used for this model is going to be a little bit of edge highlighting. And I'm not going to build up to the edge highlight or anything like that. I'm going from black to this off-white ivory color with Vallejo that I'm using. And pretty much I'm just trying to give all the detail back to the gun. And I'm using such a stark contrast of the off-white, almost white, is just so once again, when you're standing away from the model, you can see all the elements on it, all these extra protrusions, just what he's holding instead of just this black void, just getting all the detail. In. And you can see slowly in this time lapse how much detail comes back to that centerpiece, the gun. All right, and the last step is going to be using the Dawn Stone color for the base, just a gray. Same thing with the blue, how we loaded our brush. Circular motions, just hitting it from all angles, and I'm not worrying about in between the legs. The model is going to naturally cast this shadow if I don't go in between the legs. And to tie it all together, I'm just going to use a little bit of Nuln Oil with the black, the gray, to make it really stand out, give it some texture, and a little bit of the cracks to the stone. And after 90 minutes of work, two simple techniques, and just a handful of colors, I ended up with a pretty good looking fully painted miniature that would look great on the table, look decent when holding in your hand. And honestly, for the amount of time I spent, lack of stress and just how much fun I had painting this model, I would say the result is definitely worth it. I hope that uh, this is something that was helpful to you. There was a takeaway, but yeah, looking pretty good, I'd say. Alrighty, so to review what we did to this model, we did a little bit of dry brushing, a little bit of edge highlighting, and then predominantly just stuck to certain areas and key features of the model that would stand out, like the gun, the backpack, and the other elements I didn't show, such as some of the rebarb that's coming out of the concrete on the ground, the satchels on the back, I didn't show the eyes, but when I say that this paint job took me 90 minutes that's including all the extra stuff that I didn't end up uh, that just got cut before it made it into the video so all this extra stuff that wasn't shown miniature painting process start to finish one miniature 90 minutes and the reason I think this is good for a batch paint squad army is because the first model if you're sitting there with about like I don't know anywhere from 5 to 12 I picture assemble all of them prime all of them and then dry brush all of them and do each step together with all your models until completion. And after the, you know, once you do the first model dry brushing, even, you know, by the end of that one, by the end of the second one, you're going to be picking up the pace, you're going to get faster, you're going to be better with loading your brush. And the same thing when it comes to edge highlighting, especially because if they're all going to be the same units carrying the same weaponry, you're going to have pretty much similar things on the model. You're going to be much more comfortable with the model. You'll be picking up the paste. So, you know, if you were to try I would would guess because I haven't done it yet but try this method with a squad of space marines or whichever guys you choose it would probably be I would say two painting sessions would be my fair guess because I think uh, in one squad 12 of these guys come I'm not 100% sure but yeah I had a lot of fun this was something I could just sit down relax none of this was very challenging or I felt like I had to 
pour a lot of time into it to get a good effect because I have gotten compliments on this model and it was literally just because of that I felt the need or really the desire to just want to make a video on this if this is going to help anybody else when it comes to getting their army ready for the tabletop or if you just learn something when it comes to a new technique edge highlighting or dry brushing not that I'm uh, an expert but maybe if I explained it in a way that you've never heard before or whichever not even giving myself so much credit just if you learn something then awesome that will be the biggest thing of this video and for you just getting a fully painted miniature squad army whatever and at the end of the day this will hopefully you know you'll get hours in on practicing your dry brushing your edge highlighting your brush control and at the end of the day we're just trying to become better painters whether it's just for a cool army on the game or actually getting into the painting side either way i feel like this was something that can help almost anybody so yeah and that is it. Ramble is over. This is the first video, once again, for the YouTube channel, Die Hard Painting. A play on my name that I didn't say at the beginning, John McLean. That's my full name, so yippee ki -yay. And uh, hopefully there will be more to come. Alrighty, guys. I will see you in the next video.